Being a reseller, it ain't easy. Even if you do everything technically right, if you don't do these things, these two things that I'm gonna tell you about here, um, it's gonna be tough for you as a reseller. So we're gonna talk about that on the other side. So without any further ado, let's go. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is John from Flippin' Ain't Easy. And in today's video, I wanted to talk to you about a couple things that I think that some resellers, not all, but some resellers really overlook when it comes to doing this business that can really hurt you uh, in the long run. And um, one is more on the eBay side, the other one is more on your own personal mental health side. But I think that they're both equally important, important enough to make this video. And the, the first thing I wanna to talk to you about is something I kinda of touched on in the live stream when I was talking about the whole, you know, how to navigate and deal with scammers so that you, you know, aren't that negatively affected by them. But the big problem that I see when I'm reading these uh, sellers talking about experiences that they go through with their account and a big thing that I see that they fail to do is they're not acting in a timely manner when they receive a notification from eBay. And, and to be honest with you, they're probably not acting in a timely manner when it comes to their buyer reaching out, whether it's that question they wanna ask about an item, whether it is reaching out to you first before opening the return. It's little things like that that over time can hurt your account. So let me explain. If a buyer opens a return and you fail to respond, if you fail to accept the return, let's say you do the thing that we talk about you shouldn't be doing on this channel, and that is having a policy of no returns. Um, if you are one of the few out there who continue to have that policy, and let's say a buyer goes in and opens a return anyway, let's say it's an INAD, item not as described, well, if you ignore it, think it's maybe just going to go away, it will go away. In fact, the, the uh, buyer will end up getting to keep their money and eBay will give you a defect on your account. And when you build up defects on your account, you can build up defects on your account for canceling an item for the wrong reason. Um, you can get a defect on your account when uh, eBay has to step in on your behalf to satisfy, let's just say satisfy, uh, a request of a buyer. A lot of times we're talking about a return request, right? Um, let's say you accept the return. That buyer returns the item back to you and they give you, you know, they only give us a few days. They give the, the buyer like 30 days to take their time to send the item back. But when we get it, we only have, we're like under the gun. In fact, that night, you're getting a message from eBay saying, we see you receive the item, refund the buyer their money, right? So they give you a few days to take care of that. If you do not take care of that by a certain date, eBay will do it for you. Now, you may not see a difference immediately. You know, it's the same result, right? The buyer's gonna get their money back anyway. And so that's one less task that you had to deal with. But guess what? You get a defect on your account. You get enough defects on your account your account's gonna be in trouble. And I can tell you this, your search results long-term are going to be impacted from having defects on your account because you did not take action. So it's always important as a seller to be on top of your account. Check your summary under Seller Hub. Check your summary multiple times a day. Um, and I'm a firm believer of this. It, if you act on a a return request, if you act on a customer question in a quick time frame, I firmly believe that um, that does positively impact your account uh, when it comes to, you know, this algorithm that we talk about, Cassini, and the mysteries that are all behind it. I'm a firm believer that, you know, if you have a open return request and you let that thing linger, you know, it tells you, please respond to the buyer by this date. They'll give you, you know, three, four days. But I really think if you allow that buyer to hang on and wait for you to respond to that return request, I really think it does hurt your, 
short-term search results. Now that's just my theory, and I can tell you that because there's been times I've received a uh, return request, didn't even see a, anything pop up on my phone, and I didn't even get to it until that next morning, and I didn't have any sales overnight, which is sort of uncommon. Usually, I'll have a few sales overnight. So, you know, it's just a theory of mine. I, I really think that um, bottom line, it's good customer service. If that buyer puts in that return request, if that buyer sends you a message asking you about the item and you're very quick about getting back to them, I've had many, many buyers tell me, you know what, thank you for the quick response. Whether it was, you know, the answer they were looking for or not, the fact that I got back to them in a timely manner and tried to address their question as quickly as possible. You know, we're selling items, right? But the bottom line is, we're also in the business of customer service. Whether you wanted to admit to it or not, you know, your job is to sell these items. It's how you make your money. But to keep these buyers maybe coming back, maybe you have a niche, maybe you're trying to build your business to encourage customers to come back and buy from you um, more often as maybe a resource for whatever you're selling. By showing them that they're a valued customer, by taking care of their requests or questions, right away, that may set you apart from the next seller that they decide to go to if you're not meeting those needs. The next thing I think is really important, and I've talked about this on a, a couple occasions over the last couple years on this channel, and that is spending time doing things away from eBay and reselling in general, just to sort of regroup, maybe um, get away from just the grind. eBay, you know, flipping ain't easy. It's because it's a grind, you know, day in and day out. If you're doing this full time, and maybe so if you're doing it as a way to supplement your nine to five, you're not really taking much time. Chances are you're not taking much time to get away, get away from eBay. And, you know, what I do, I bowl in a couple leagues, uh, Mondays and Thursday nights. Um, maybe I'll play a round of golf every two weeks, um, but it's a way that I can get away. And, you know, I work seven days a week. I don't take any days off. I take time off. And sometimes you take a few hours away just to get away from the business. It does make things a lot easier and it doesn't feel like you're um, in a just in a grind, right? Because after a while, the same thing over and over and over again, without anything constructive or fun to look forward to, can really uh, wear you down. And to be honest with you, there's got to be some kind of uh, of a reward at the end of the rainbow. So while you're grinding away, making sales, and some channels will frown upon this because you're you're just wasting time, right? But your mental health. Um, I think it's very important whether you find time at the gym. Uh, for me, like I say, I bowl two two nights out of the week. Uh, I've been bowling pretty terribly lately. Uh, shot a 742, 750, 709 the last three times out uh, in league. But I digress. Um, for those of you who bowl, you know, that's actually pretty good. But I don't claim to be very good uh, as a bowler. I'm just going out there to have fun, spend time with friends, uh, just enjoy a few hours away because like I said, I work every day. Um, it's very rare that I spend time like full days away from the business. You just really can't because you know, you're getting those messages from your buyer, right? You're getting sometimes those return requests that you have to investigate. Maybe you're getting a return that you have to inspect. And I think it's just very important that you take the time, even though you may be away, that you're answering those questions, you're doing the customer service, um, which is why I really don't take full days off. And because I'm a, you know, my wife and I, we're the only ones running this business. We don't have employees where we can say, hey, handle the things that I would normally do because I'm taking the day off. That's just not the way it is. And so, um, and maybe I'll make a video as to why, you know, I never ventured down that road. I'm happy with what we're doing. And, you know, everyone has to make the decisions that they're making. But I think the one thing that you really should consider if you're not doing it is just take a little time, maybe just a few hours a day or maybe a few hours, you know, on this day and maybe a few hours on that day. 
and plan something that you can look forward to. It's going to make things um, a lot more fun, uh, give you something to look forward to, like I mentioned. So what do you guys think? Comment down below. Let me know what you think, guys. I think a lot of times because these subjects aren't talked about too much when it comes to um, you know your customer and really your well-being and taking time away from eBay, that I think sometimes these are forgotten subjects. So I thought I'd just kind of touch on these. You know, it's not controversial. There's nothing controversial about it. But I just want your thoughts uh, on what I touched on in this video. I wanted to touch on what another YouTuber said over the last couple weeks about smaller channels, following small channels that maybe don't appear to be all that successful. You know what? Let me tell you something here. I don't have employees, okay? I have a cool sign behind me but I don't have employees. And I don't think that's that big of a deal. Um, what I think is a big deal is making this business work for you. Um, and that's what this advice from this channel is. Maybe my business on eBay isn't as successful as yours. And for that, good for you. You're making it work for you. But this channel is really designed to just bring up subjects, bring up things that I come across in this business, bring up things that maybe others, if they were doing YouTube, in addition to the eBay they were doing, would probably also bring up. But it's just wanting to create awareness of the things that we all will deal with at one time or another in this business. And I don't want you guys to think that I'm just up here complaining. It may come off that way. It's because I'm very passionate about a lot of this material that I'm going over. I really feel strongly about eBay's relationship with its sellers. And I want that to change. I want that to change a lot because it'll make our enjoyment of reselling a lot better. But that comes off to some of you and to some other YouTubers as complaining. And it's not complaining. I promise you that. eBay is a blessing, okay? And if it wasn't for eBay, I mean, I'm sure there'd be another site out there taking their business. Let's just say for a second, there's just Amazon or some other sites. That's where as resellers, we would more than likely have to try to go. And I can tell you, it would not be um, as rosy as it is right now with eBay. So for all their faults, um, eBay is definitely a blessing. And um, I just want it to be, to be known to make it clear because not only do some YouTubers talk about channels like mine and others that maybe complain uh, once in a while or make our feelings known that we want maybe if eBay is watching to change, but there are also some trolls that are watching right now that uh, may be tempted to, to say something snarky when I make a video and you know what? It's affecting me less and less, but at the same time, understand I'm taking my time out of my day to do the best that I can to bring you this material, to share this experience or these experiences with you. And maybe a snarky comment just isn't warranted. Maybe just try to be productive. Maybe instead of giving me grief, find a, a question in the chat down below or in the comments down below and try to answer that question Use your time, use your intelligence, use your experience to try to help others like I'm doing. Maybe you don't have a YouTube channel, I get it, but you can still help someone down below in the comments by answering their questions. Or you know what, or giving them a positive uh, comment, positive feedback of the experience that they're sharing with all of us, that would be a little bit more productive than trolling this video. Now, as I say that, I'm probably gonna get about three or four trolling comments down below but they'll be temporary because you do that, I'm just gonna just take you off the channel because it's not worth it. There are so many positive people that are watching this video right now that have left comments down below. I certainly appreciate each and every one of you guys and gals, and there's just no place, there's no time, there's no space on this channel for the negativity. So guys, that's my rant. Hopefully you didn't click off five minutes ago, but if you're still with me, I just wanna thank you for being a part of this channel, helping you know make this channel what it is. And um, I hope that you stick with me because I'm fired up to make more videos and you will see me very soon. 
So do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and of course, hit that notification bell. So when I go live on a whim, which I just do, you're gonna be notified and uh, you won't miss it. So guys, paying attention to your customer's needs, um, watching for those notifications that come through on your smartphone, and really just taking care of yourself and just taking some time away for yourself or maybe even time away with your significant other. These are all different aspects of how flipping ain't easy. And I want you guys to have an excellent weekend and we will talk to you very soon.